Hey everyone, welcome to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert, and today is day four of March Malt Madness. Uh, I mentioned in yesterday's video that I don't have a lot of experience with either of tonight's whiskeys. Uh, in fact, one of them, the Ben Romick, I hadn't tasted at all. It was a brand new bottle. I didn't realize I hadn't even opened it yet. So this is a new bottle crack for the Ben Romick. As you can see on the Jura, I've had some of it, but it's been quite a while since I've tasted it. So I don't remember the details too well. Um, ben Romick 10 is a Speyside. Let me read you the relevant statistics. It is a Speyside um, Scotch. It is bottled at 43% ABV. It's not available here in North Carolina, but I did pick it up in Chicago for $40, so relatively inexpensive. It's uh, matured for nine of the 10 years in a combination of bourbon and sherry casks, 80% bourbon casks, 20% sherry casks, and then it's married together for the final year, finishing in Oloroso sherry casks. It is natural color. It says it's slightly chill filtered. Now, I don't know what's involved in the chill filtering process. I do know that a lot of whiskey enthusiasts are not fans of chill filtering because it strips out some of the flavors basically. But I'm not sure how something can be slightly chill filtered. There must be some degrees that they can choose within that process, but it is all natural color. Uh, the Jura 10 is an island. It's from the Isle of Jura. It's an island whiskey. It's bottled at only 40% um, and it is $50 available here in North Carolina. It's matured for 10 years in ex bourbon barrels and then finished very briefly in Oloroso sherry casks. And it is both added artificial color and chill filtered. So two things that bourbon, or bourbon uh, Scotch whiskey enthusiasts are not very fond of is the idea of adding artificial color. I don't know enough to know whether that actually changes the taste, but I do know that it's unnecessary. I don't really care what the color is. It's a natural product. If it comes out very pale and still has a banger taste, I don't care. I don't see the need for the artificial coloring. And I don't like the chill filtering because I know it does strip out some flavors. There are some products, um, there, there's a bourbon, one of my favorite bourbons, for instance, um, Wild Turkey's Rare Breed is chill filtered, but you can buy a bottle of it on the international travel market that is unchill filtered. And I've seen a number of people do side-by-side -side taste tests of that. And they said there's a market difference. They much prefer the unchill filtered. So, both of these have something not, not in their favor tonight, let's just say that. Okay, so let's see how they smell, first of all. Like I said, the, the Ben Romick is completely new to me tonight, so space eyes are typically very sweet. Um, I think this one has a slight, slight, slight bit of peat, but I'm, I'm willing to, to guess that you won't be able to pick it out too much. Um, but most of them are fruit flavored, apples, pears, things like that, honey. Well, I take it back. I can smell a little bit of the peat, but it's not by any means strong. And of course, I'm a peat head, so I like that. When Speysides start adding a little peat to their, their whiskey process, I, my ears perk up. Okay, so I'm getting the fruits. I'm getting a little bit of the peat. But um, it's almost like when I first smell an Irish whiskey, the first thing I usually get from Irish whiskey is apples or pears. There's a similar fruit scent here, but that added peat changes it a little bit, makes it a little bit darker. Okay, and the Jura is an island, but it is ex, mostly ex-bourbon and only a little bit of sherry influence. So I expect somewhat similar aromas and tastes in this. And I don't smell any peat here. I think from what I saw on the website, they use a tiny proportion of peat in the drying process uh, to stop the germination of the, um, 
of the grains, but it's, it's not really uh, noticeable. Similar vanillas, uh, what you might expect from oak barrels, vanillas, a little bit of fruit. But the, the scents on the Jura are much less pronounced than they were on the uh, Benromic. When I first opened up the Benromic upstairs, I could smell it immediately even before sticking my nose in it. Okay, let's see how they taste. Gonna have somewhat similar flavor profiles because they're primarily ex-bourbon barrel matured. Oh, that peat really surprises me. I, did, I wasn't expecting that. A tiny little bit of the smoke. It's not aggressive. It just kind of gives you that, uh, that sense of the peat. And I can almost smell it again after tasting it. But I am getting the fruit flavors and the vanillas and the typical things you get from bourbon maturation with a tiny little bit of sherry influence in there. There's some darker fruit in there too as well. All right, let's try the Jura. The Jura has some nice flavors, but my immediate perception is that it just, it seems very thin. Being bottled at 40% and being chill filtered, it's got a lot of things going against the idea of big, bold flavors. And it really seems like it's watered down too much. When I first started drinking whiskey, and scotch in particular, a 40% ABV bottle was plenty strong for me. I didn't really have a palate for it yet. I wasn't really sure what to expect. And so I started off buying some very traditional initial core range bottlings from big name distillers. And most of them were 40%, which is the bare minimum it can be and still be called whiskey. Uh, but as I started getting used to drinking scotch and and bourbon and rye as well and i started exploring some bottles that had slightly higher alcohol content i realized the differences that they can get in the the, the volume of flavors and the range of flavor experiences and you go back to a 40 percent one after drinking slightly higher ones and you realize how much more watered down the 40 percent one is if you think you already know what I'm going to pick, you're probably right. Yeah, even just the three percentage points difference in alcohol by volume makes a big difference in the flavor profiles. I would like to try a Jura at a much higher strength without the chill filtering, without the the artificial color and see how that compares because I like island whiskeys. I like bourbon maturation. Uh, so it's got a lot of things going for it for my flavor uh, preferred palette, but it's too watered down. It's too thin. There's not much there. There's almost no finish whatsoever. It just disappears in your mouth after a few seconds. Whereas the Ben Romic, I can still taste 15, 20, 30 seconds later. I'm still tasting on the edge of my tongue, a little bit of that peat and a little bit of the fruit, uh, the sweetness. So tonight's matchup is a blowout. Uh, it's going to be the Ben Romic all the way. I'm going to say goodbye to the Jura. And I probably won't buy another one of those when, when this one is empty unless I can find one that's at a higher alcohol volume. And I don't believe any of those are available here in North Carolina. So I'd have to find that elsewhere. One of the things that I've learned just from watching other YouTube videos is that there seems to be a sweet spot for uh, whiskey at 46% ABV. Once it gets bottled at 40, 46% or higher, Distillers can do away with chill filtering. Uh, I think what a lot of chill filtering is done for is for aesthetics, for cosmetics. 
when a whiskey gets cold, if it's below that 46% ABV, sometimes it can get cloudy and people think it's gone bad when there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's very natural. And when it warms up again, it, it, it gets clear again. But that seems to stop at the 46% level. And so a lot of whiskeys are now being produced and distributed at 46% or above so they can do away with the chill filtering and leave all those robust flavors in it, in it. I have become more and more a fan of slightly higher alcohol content on scotch. I'm still pretty much uh, in, the, in the minor leagues when it comes to drinking high proof bourbons. They, they start knocking me around and so I have to resort to an ice cube to, to calm them down a little bit. I've never had to do that with scotch, however. And so for me, if it's less than 46%, I raise an eyebrow. If it's 40% and artificial color, I raise all the eyebrows and just it just doesn't work for me. It's not worth, especially because this is $10 more, this is $50 and this is only $40. And this gives a whole lot richer flavors than the Jura does. So I'm not picking on Jura. There are a lot of other distillers who do the same thing, who use chill filtering and bottle at 40%. But for me, the flavor experience, it, there's no question that the Benromic delivers much more. So Benromic goes through, Jura gets eliminated. We've eliminated four now, so there are 27 whiskeys left in the competition. Tomorrow's matchup for day five will be Bunahaven 12, which is an Isla Scotch, but it's not a peated Isla Scotch, a little bit unusual versus Kleinleash 14, one I've only tried once and remember really enjoying. So that's gonna be an interesting matchup tomorrow. Let me know in the comments whether you've had either of these or both of these, what you think, uh, what's your favorites, which do you think is gonna go through tomorrow, and I will see you then. Bye everybody.